everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Unleashed on the Hermitcraft server. Oh yeah. What's up guys? How's it going? How's everybody doing? Uh, I was just kind of playing around here in third person view and I'm noticing down by my sword there is like this weird thingy. You can kind of see it below my hand there. Not sure what that is. It's kind of sticking off of my leg. Uh, so I was thinking maybe it was my leg armor. But no, it's still there. You can kind of see it right there with my leg armor off. Uh, body armor. Yeah, whatever that is, is part of the body armor. I don't... What is that thing? <laughs> what? I, I can't even tell. But you know, uh, guys, we just got back from Minecon. And I think I had already recorded a video since I got back from Minecon. But I never showed you guys my cape. So that is the new Minecon 2013 cape. Yes, very cool. Um, the old one that I had was a blue cape from the France in 2012. It was like a blue cape with a gold pickaxe or something. But yeah, this one now has a piston on it. So yeah, that is very cool. Very cool. Okay. So today, I have been just kind of looking around the spawn area base here. And I know people are saying you should build a proper base and all that stuff. Maybe eventually. I kind of wanted this to be just an open air kind of a base. I've never really done that before. All of my bases have always been inside kind of, like, kind of like a structure or a cave or underground or whatever. And I thought I would do something unique, which a lot of you guys think is more lazy than unique, but whatever. And just have like an open air base. Uh, but one thing I've been noticing here, since we are powering things off of force... We have our squeezer downstairs that's squeezing forced logs or, in this case, forced gems at the moment to make this liquid force. The liquid force is going into this tank and that is powering some force engines down below. Uh, when the energy cells run low, these guys kick on, charge up the energy cells, and everything's happy. When the cells are full, they turn off. Okay. So while we're making that liquid force, uh, currently... Hey, the cow's got a Skyrim hat on today. <laughs> uh, currently, we are squeezing forced gems because I had no use for these forced gems. But as a byproduct of squeezing forced gems, we get a force shard, I think is what that thing's called. Let me pull out the old wireless thingy here. And force. What are these things called? Yeah, force shard. So I was looking at these things, and I know you can turn these into liquid force as well. The only reason why I'm concerned about this is because we are running low on the force gems. We're down below 3,000 of these now. And eventually we're going to switch over to these logs. But I would like to do something with these force shards because to me, they're about as useless as the force gems. I have no, no use for them. They're just going to be taking up space. Uh, but one thing I do know is that you can turn them into liquid force because I've seen that before. Uh, let's see, a force. Let me grab a force engine. I do have one of these. Let's grab some of these force shards and let's check this out. So we stick the force engine on the ground and we can not put those in the engine. I thought you could. I know I've used these somewhere else. Where have I used these? Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Was it, oh, maybe the force infuser? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, so we got liquid force in here. Can we put these force shards in here? Oh yeah, see, we can put those in there and they turn from the force shard into liquid force here. But they don't do it in the force engine. That's weird. And I tried squeezing those before, and you can't squeeze them. So it seems like if we put them into the force infuser, we can turn them into liquid force. Now, that is interesting because I wonder if we can get the liquid out of the force infuser. Hmm. Uh, let's try using some liquid ducts. Do I have some of those on me? I do. Liquid ducts. Let's grab a lever. Probably need to do the extract mode. Let's check this out. So, do something like that. Uh, lever. And we will need our Omni Wrench or just whatever kind of a wrench to flip this around. And if we flick this, yes, we can, in fact, get the liquid force out of the force infuser. That is interesting. Okay, so we're going to have to do something kind of weird to get this liquid force out. But, um... I don't see a problem with doing this. So let's see. Uh, downstairs, how do we have this set up? We have the squeezer squeezing whatever we're squeezing, and that's going directly into the tank. Uh, so I wonder if we hook up. 
another valve, maybe on the side over here. I'm going to put a valve here with a liquid tesseract. And then we could have a force infuser getting the liquid force and sending it through the liquid tesseract into this tank. That could work. Let's go ahead and try something like that. Uh, where would we put the force infuser? We want it somewhere near the applied energistics cable so I can do an export bus onto it. Uh, maybe right here we could set up something temporary. Let's start working on that because I do want to get rid of those force shards. Like I say, they have no no purpose. They're just taking up space and we can get the force, the force juice out of them. Uh, so we need an export bus. Probably just a basic one will be enough. Uh, let's go ahead and craft up one of those real quick. All right, so we need one of those. We need a force shard to set the export configuration. Uh, we need a piece of obsidian. Uh-huh. And then we are going to need the force rod, which I believe is in my golden bag of holding right here. Where are we at? Force rod. Okay, so I think... I think we should have everything we need to get this done. Oh, we also need a Tesseract. Do I have a liquid Tesseract here? I do. Awesome. Um, do we need another liquid Tesseract? Actually, I don't even think we need a Tesseract for this at all because we could just go directly from the Force Infuser pipe out and into a valve. Okay, let's not use the Tesseract. Let's get another steel valve, I think. Yep, we still had some of those left, great. Okay, so let's check this out. Uh, we have this here, so we're probably gonna wanna do it on this side. Let's replace that with a valve. I'm just gonna break that. It's gonna cause all sorts, oh, let me do the coin of fortune so I can get that out easier. Nice. Okay, so we'll put the valve Oh, did, oh, I broke more than one. That's what happened. I was like, what's going on there? Put that back and put a valve there. Great. Now all the liquid's back. Everything's happy. So we need to do some liquid ducts. We're going to need, I think, just two. Right? Um, we need the force infuser so we can stick that right here. Is that what we want? I think we can stick it right there. So I have to hit that with the force rod. Nice. Um, I think I have to break and replace this liquid duct. I don't think it knows it can connect to that yet. All right. Uh, let's set that right like that. We will do the basic export bus. Let's fly up a little bit. I think we can do it just like that. We will put four shards in there. So is that going to work? I don't even know if we can do that if that's even gonna work it doesn't look like that is going in maybe it's a directional thing it won't go in from the top let's try putting that in from the side hopefully this is gonna work if not that's gonna be kind of a problem i'm sure we'll figure out another way to get these to work if we can't do it this way so we do that does that work that does not appear to be putting anything in here i don't know why interesting uh maybe it has to go in from the bottom Maybe this has to have power before it'll let any items go in. Uh, maybe we'll just have to pipe them in using build craft pipes. Uh, let's see here. Well, we could try that. Do we have, I need like an obsidian pipe and maybe just a force pipe or something. Or maybe just an obsidian pipe, just straight would work. So we could test and see if this will work. So we'll put that right there. And if I take, oh, let's turn off the coin of fortune. If I take this and just shh. Q. So that kind of does not go in there. That's interesting. All right. So this isn't going to work as I thought it would. Uh, maybe a vanilla hopper will work. Let's try a hopper. I uh, got one crafted. Very good. Let's try sticking that there and let's put the force shard in. Does not seem to be allowing it to go in. So, hmm. What are we going to do? Uh, we could try using a factorization router. We could try doing computer craft. Maybe a turtle will be able to put it in there. Um, or a computer. Let's see. Well, tell you what, guys. Give me a moment here. I was really expecting us to be able to just use applied energistics to get that in there. But it looks like we're going to have to do something a little bit more complex. 
So give me one moment here. I'm going to try a few more things, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, I've given this a go in a couple of different ways. I tried using a turtle. This was my turtle that I used for placing the melon blocks long ago in the B area. I tried using the turtle to place blocks into the force infuser. I tried the standard turtle place up, drop, up. Uh, I tried the open peripherals, like push into slots, different things like that. I even thought maybe hmm, if I use the force pipe and maybe the obsidian pipe and just drop the items into the obsidian pipe, it might work because it's a force pipe going to the force infuser. Nope, still doesn't work. So it looks like if we're going to do this, it's got to be manual, which means I got to remember to come down here and place these force shards into the force infuser, and then we can extract that liquid and put it into the tank. So that is something that we can do. Definitely, we can do that. Um, not sure. <laughs> uh, I guess what we could also do is just set up a whole bunch of these force infusers and just drop all of them in there. Uh, but unfortunately, there's no way to restock the force infusers other than manually dropping them into this inventory slot. This doesn't appear to be a standard inventory slot that has a number value assigned to it where you can normally say place in the slot 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever. Uh, I don't know if any of these work in that fashion, but I definitely couldn't get an item to go into here without manually placing it there. So I've dropped in some liquid force. We got that going. Uh, we go and extract that out, put that into the tank. And I think this will work along with the squeezer. Maybe the squeezer will wait until this is all done before it squeezes more. I really don't know um, how this is all going to work. We could also just take this pipe and pipe it over all the way around into this other connection here. Um, and that way it might stop the squeezer from trying to squeeze things while the force infuser still has liquid to extract. Uh, I'm going to have to play around with this for just a little bit longer to find out the best way of doing it. Obviously, this isn't automated, so this is going to be all manually done. Uh, but it is a good way to get rid of those shards and give them an, a use. So let's go ahead and put some of this other stuff away. Did I just put my arrows away? I think I did. Let me get those back out. Uh, people are saying that I should also put infinity on my bow. I've done that long, long ago. Uh, this bow has pretty much everything I need, so I've had 22 arrows on me for the longest time. Uh, yeah, these aren't going anywhere. Uh, we can just drop that stuff off. We don't need this anymore. Okay, so I also tried uh, getting this full, putting the shard in there, and then using the hopper to pipe in there, Hopefully, hoping that it would recognize that, hey, this is an inventory slot, and it has a force shard. Can I put more in there? But no, that still doesn't work. So this is a completely manual process. So if I grab some force shards, let's go ahead and grab a stack of those. We can just drop those right into the force infuser. And then we need a lever to turn this thing on. I don't know what happened to my other lever. I might have left it uh, where we were testing before. Let's just grab a new one, though. All right, so lever, do that. That should extract the liquid out. It's going to start using these four shards. And, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I really do believe that we need to connect this pipe over to this pipe because this pipe's going to empty. The squeezer is going to be like, oh, hey, I got some room in my inventory. Let's go ahead and squeeze some more stuff. So, yeah, maybe we should just go ahead and move this over right now uh, before... Because otherwise, if we don't move that, I think it's just going to you know, squeeze some of those shards and squeeze some of the... Um, yeah, some of these shards and it's going to squeeze some of the gems or whatever. So let's just go ahead and move this all the way around right like this. Connect them up. I think I can just go ahead and get rid of that tank valve that we put in there. I don't believe it's going to be needed anymore. Let's go ahead and connect you together and right like that. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, we do need that lever back though. And we can just go ahead and stick that right here. That should be fine. Okay, so that should be extracting the liquid force out of here. Um, I will be interested in seeing if this goes down, but it doesn't look like it is. Hmm. Is this still squeezing? This doesn't tell me how much is in here. Uh, maybe it's just going twice as slow now. I don't know. But I would have expected this to go down just a little bit. And then I'll use another force shard and so on and so forth. But it doesn't appear that it is working that way. Okay, well, 
I think we're fine. I'm just going to leave this alone. Like I said, it's a manual process. No point sitting here watching it. It's just going to go when it goes. We can just go ahead and move on to something else. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to check out is people were telling me a few episodes ago that I should try catching a butterfly in a safari net. And then we could see if we could spawn those because I believe at the time I was talking about we could do the tree breeding without actually using any bees, which I thought was going to be pretty awesome. So I want to go and try doing that. Uh, so let's see. We need a safari net. Let's go ahead and make up one of these guys. It is a gas tier with some ender pearls around it. Okay, so we have the reusable safari net. Now we need to do the more difficult part of finding a bee. Well, luckily, I know Tinfoil Chef, TFC, uh, he's been using the same bee age I have been, but his bee area is off in the distance out of the loaded chunks from when I'm here. So he is, I think, over this direction, about 200 blocks or so. And last time I was over there, I saw that he had some butterflies around. I've removed most of the trees from around my area. Uh, I did see a butterfly around here somewhere. I don't know where it went. Those things are so small, and then they fly off into unloaded chunks or whatever. Uh, maybe they despawn. I, I really don't know. But uh, I do know that I've seen some over by his base. He has more trees around, which will uh, allow more of the bee or the butterflies to spawn. So let's go ahead over here, see if we can find a butterfly by his area. Oh, yeah, there's one right now. Can we... Oop. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Can we catch these things? Come here, butterfly. Oh, man, these things... Oh, got it. Did I get it? Entity butterfly GE name. I think I got it. Okay, so there's another butterfly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, where are we? Here we go. There's the exit. Okay, so now we have a butterfly in a safari net. So that's part one of this thing done. Uh, the next step is to see if we can spawn more butterflies. Because if we can do that, that'll give us a use for that mob essence we've been collecting over at the tree base area. And then I'd love to be able to hook up some way to automatically breed trees together without having to wait on bees. If we can spawn a whole bunch of butterflies, then that should speed up the process a significant amount. So let me uh, grab my wrench. I wanted to take this liquid ducts down from over here too because this is kind of annoying me. Take that down. Okay, so we need an auto spawner. I think I should still have one from a while ago. Yep, uh, we need the liquid tesseract. Let's grab one of you. All right, what else do we need? Uh, we need power. How are we gonna power this thing? It can be done with EU or MJ. Do you have any solars? I have an ultimate hybrid, these medium voltage solars. It's almost daytime. I um, think we could probably just stick it right here to test. Are we in area mode? Okay, let's do this. We will stick the auto spawner right here. <laughs> okay, so that's getting power. Uh, liquid tesseract. We need some mob juice going in there. Receive only uh, mob juice. Okay, so that should be filling up. Excellent. We got power. We got the mob juice. Spawn exact copy, no. So if we put this in here, what happens? Whoa, hey, we got a butterfly. We got two butterflies. Okay, so th this is working. Stop. No, we don't need any more butterflies. Uh, can I capture these things? Are they in the ground? Whoa, okay. Well, I can kill them. <laughs> I thought there was a way that you could capture these things. How did... Maybe an open hand? Is there like a net or something? It's weird how they're just staying there, right there on the ground. They're not flying away. Uh, okay, so here's the butterflies. Oh, a butterfly elizer. Butterfly, butterlizer? Flutterlizer. I, I said it. <laughs> so, the, yeah, all these different types of butterflies, but I thought there was a way that you could capture them. Is there not? There's got to be like a net or something. Uh, where are we? There's a bunch of bee stuff. Maybe I'll just search for net. Uh, scratching my head. <laughs> Maybe there isn't a way. I was pretty sure. Maybe it's just if you get them in creative mode. What are these? Netherrack? Oh, that's weird. 
net. Um, I don't know what else uh, you would say to capture these things. So are they just? What's the deal? Are, oh, sorry. Whoop. So I think they've been spawned in the ground. That's why they're not moving. Um, trying to break the blocks around them. I ended up punching them. Can I just try it this way, maybe? Aha. So the butterfly fell down. Butterfly. Is it dead? <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Uh, well, that's weird. So right-clicking on it does nothing. Um, yeah, I don't. I really don't know. But I can punch him. So that that's nice. I mean, we know we can do that. <laughs> well, that's easy cleanup for the butterflies. All right. Well, we know that we can spawn them. It's kind of weird how... Oh, there's another one down here, too. It's kind of weird how they're not flying around. They're just kind of staying in one spot. I wonder if it's because I spawned them too low or something. Uh, we could try doing the force wrench and moving this thing, since it should still retain its power and the mob juice. We could stick this somewhere else. I'm just going to drop it right here and spawn some more and see what happens. Okay. Put that in there. So, well, they're spawning, but they're not doing anything. Huh. I really would have expected these guys to kind of fly around and do some stuff, but... All right. Well, I'm going to have to figure the figure out what we're going to have to do with these guys. You can't push them around or anything. They look pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if they're not going to fly around, they're not going to pollinate stuff. So that is kind of a problem. Uh, we could also try doing like spawn exact copy. Maybe that's what we need to do. Uh, let me grab a solar. Let's grab one of these. That should be enough. Right, I guess three of them. Whoa, hey, did that butterfly fly away? The one that was on top of here? I don't see it anymore. I don't know where it went. I thought there was one more on top of this thing, but that seems to be gone. Okay, so we're getting the power back. Let's do spawn exact copy, yes. Put the safari net in there. Okay, so that spawned this guy right here that just kind of fell to the ground. is not doing anything. Another one over there. Um, okay, well, maybe they need a day-night cycle to do something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, very weird, very weird. So I tell you guys what, I'm going to play around with these guys for a little bit longer figure out what we can do to get them to fly around because they're just, just going to sit there and derp that's not really helpful so give me a moment and we'll be right back all right so i've been watching these for a little bit and it looks like they randomly decide to take off and start flying so maybe when they're spawned there's some kind of a cool down before they start taking off and moving around but two of them just out of nowhere started flying around there's one right over here now um didn't fly very far. Looks like another one kind of went over here by this mushroom. So, yeah, that one just took off. So, that one's flying around. Okay, so it looks like this will work. After you spawn them, there's probably a few seconds worth of cooldown or something before they're going to take off and start flying around. But very cool that they do, in fact, fly away. Uh, I really don't want the butterflies here, though. I made sure. Oh, what did I just get? Red spruce pollen. Okay. Uh-huh. I don't really know much about these butterflies, but I do know that they can pollinate uh, different trees and stuff like that. Oop, hey, okay, so that one flew away. <laughs> Goodbye, butterfly. Right, so I think the next step would be to hook up some kind of an enclosure. Uh, we want to be able to keep the butterflies around, and we want to be able to have them uh, around some trees and things. I'm noticing on the mini-map that the butterflies are question marks. I didn't know that before. Come here, you butterfly. <laughs> oh, man. Once you let them escape, they're gone for good. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is head over to the tree base somewhere. Sorry. Um, where's my, my thingy? Let's head over to the tree base. And we got to figure out a spot where we are going to grow some trees, make an enclosure, and keep those butterflies around the trees so they pollinate. And I think the next best spot would probably be... Right over in this area, it's relatively flat. I will have to remove a little bit of the hilly area if we're going to put a room here. Or maybe raise the area up a little bit. 
Uh, we want to grow a couple of trees. We want to surround those in something where the butterflies can't escape. I might look into doing the MFFS. I've never used that before, so that might be too much. Maybe I'll just use something like blocks, glass, or something to contain the butterflies for now. Uh, we'll move on to something more advanced a little bit later. Uh, we need to figure out what kind of trees we're going to put next to each other. And I believe if you do um, the oak trees, and I think it's birch, you can get the apple oak no i don't think that's actually correct i think those turn into a willow if i remember right i think it's just the apple tree uh you put it into the tree elizer and that converts the sapling from the standard vanilla to the forestry apple oak i'm pretty sure that's how that works uh but let me go ahead and start constructing some kind of a building get a couple trees planted here and we will check out some butterfly pollination action be back in a moment all right, guys, so I went around and I found some more saplings and we did not have any birch saplings and I don't think we had spruce, but I got both of those saplings now. Uh, I also went ahead and I made a tree elizer. if you guys haven't seen this before. So the tree elizer is this right here. So it's a diamond, two redstone, some copper, and some glass pane. So not too difficult. You just have to throw that in the carpenter. Uses two buckets of water apparently. Uh, have the carpenter here for making the uh, the rain charges, the dissipation charges. Just switch the recipe out, made it, and put the recipe back. Um, I'm noticing on my mini map that there's still a blue question mark over here. I think there's still a butterfly down there. I haven't come over here and looked yet, but there's got to be a butterfly somewhere around here. I don't see it. I'm not sure where it would be. Uh, there was one that I that I saw down there, and I hit it with my sword just to get rid of it. But yeah, it looks like there's there's got to be another one down there somewhere. I'm not sure where it's at. Okay, uh, enough talking about the butterfly. <laughs> Let's move on. So back at the tree base, I did go ahead and I constructed the building that we are going to do our tree breeding in, and it is right over here. So I made it kind of tall because it has to contain the trees. And inside of here, I put down four 3x3 three three areas of dirt because some trees require 3x3, three three, some are just one, some are 2x2. Two two. So I figured we would just go ahead and we had a lot of space so we could probably fit four in there. We might be able to fit more, maybe one in the center-ish area. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but this building is 20x20, 20 20, so I probably have to make this 21x21 21 21 to get one in the center Regardless, we have this set up. So I am interested in getting some butterflies in here with some trees and seeing what's going to happen. Now, I was talking to you guys before about this tree elizer. Uh, you can take the tree elizer, put some honey drops in here, and it'll convert your vanilla saplings like the oak, spruce, or birch. Also, the jungle, I believe, or maybe the jungle still says jungle. Uh, you just put this in the tree elizer, and that turns into a silver birch. This is the forestry sapling now. Uh, we can see some information about it. It matures faster, average saplings, one by one girth. So it's not a special tree, nothing too great about it. Uh, it says that it's growth in the light and it uses plain soil. I'm not too sure what all of these different things mean. Uh, I haven't really gotten into tree breeding that much before. I did breed some trees. Oh, possible mutations. This is interesting. I think this might be new. Okay, and what's this one have? This is just the species and stuff. All right, so we're going to do a silver birch, and we're going to do an apple oak, so let's throw that in here. Uh, also, I think this works just the same as the bealizer. So if you put the entire stack in here, it will probably only use one honey drop and convert them all into the new sapling. Apple oak sapling, these should have a fruit. Uh, yeah, fruit of apple. Okay, that's very good. Supports. I, I really don't know what a lot of these things mean. Average, fast, or small. Okay, nothing special with that one either. Right, so now we have these two saplings. Uh, we will need some bone meal so we can get these things to grow a little bit faster. So let's do that. Um, bone meal. Oop, hey, stop, stop. Come here. Uh, let me go ahead and craft up like a little bit more than a stack just so I have some of these on, on me. Okay. 
so let's head inside of here. Still haven't made a proper way in. I just made this room and close it off so our butterflies won't be able to escape. Uh, so it's probably going to change over time, especially when we get some larger trees. So maybe we'll... Let's put that right in the center. Let's go ahead and bone meal those guys up. Bone meal. Okay. And... They click it a few times. Bone meal. Right. Actually, you know what? What I want to do... Let's, let's do two more. We'll do one more birch and one more oak. Do that guy. And this one. I don't want to convert these all into the forestry ones. I do want to have some of the vanilla ones left. It was kind of a pain trying to find the birch sapling. So I don't want to have to do that again later on. Uh, apple oak and silver birch. So we have a birch there. Let's do one here. Do the oak there. And then we can just hit that with some bone meal. There we go. Very cool. So this should be all we need to do uh, as far as the trees go. Uh, we do need to get the butterflies in here, and I do have my safari net. I have the auto spawner. Uh, we don't have power over here just yet, so we're going to have to figure that out. Let me go ahead and throw this in here. I'll probably steal one of the solar arrays or something. Let's see. Let's head back to... Oh, we don't need to head back there. I just need to get in range so I can grab the solar array. Uh, we will also need a liquid tesseract. Let's grab this guy. Let's grab one of these medium voltage. Maybe we'll do two of them just to have the extra power. Okay, so we will put these guys down here. Whoop, not there. Right there. So this should have power. Yep, gaining power. Very good. Uh, let's put the monster essence on there as well. Receive only mob juice. Okay, so now we should be spawning. Oh, yeah, now these butterflies are flying around. I don't know why they weren't flying before, and I don't know how many of these we need, but, man, there's a bunch of different types of butterflies, aren't there? So maybe I'll just let this go for a little while. How are we doing on power? We're doing fine. Using the mob essence. Got a bunch of butterflies going on. This is pretty cool. Yeah, and these butterflies, when they land on the leaves, I believe they get pollen. Ooh, I should cover that up so we don't have the butterflies escaping. I don't want them everywhere. Uh, I believe uh, when they land on the leaves, they have a chance of getting the pollen. And if they land on a different leaf, they have a chance of planting that pollen. Uh, but again, like I said, I don't know how many butterflies we need. Uh, we certainly got a lot of them in here, and it's still making more, I'm pretty sure, right? Yep. <laughs> so, very quickly, these guys should do what we want them to do. I probably think we have enough in here, right? We can just go ahead and turn this off. Let's do that. Okay, so these butterflies should fly around, spread the pollen around, and change the type of leaves. Yeah, there we go. There's a butterfly on a leaf over here, and there's one right here. Yeah, these guys are really, really cool. I like them. All right, so the next step is just to wait and see if these leaves change. Um, pretty much what you have to do is log out and log back in, or load and unload the chunks. So if I head back to the tree base... Or I'm sorry, back to spawn. And then I go back to the tree base. If any of those leaves have been pollinated, we should see the difference right now. But, like I said, I don't think that we're going to see it anytime soon. We're going to have to wait a little bit of time before we see those leaves change. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today. I'm going to let this go for a while. We'll check up on it next time. Oh, you know what? I also said last episode we'd check up on the diamonds. We now have 2,458 diamonds. We went through a bit of that obsidian. And coal, we still have over a million. 1.3 million this time. So we basically have infinite diamonds right now. <laughs> that's so cool. All right, guys. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time.